Hi guys, it's Tomek from Q Workshop and today I have a great pleasure because of our 20th anniversary. I have a special guest, Patrick Strzelewicz, the founder of the company. Thank you for coming. Thank you for having me, Thomas. Thank you. And this will be super exciting and interesting because uh, I hope we'll hear um, about how this whole thing happens. And also for me, it will be a bit different because normally I talk to people from outside of the company and today I'll talk to the person from the very within of the company. We'll see how it will go. All right, guys. Patrick, first question. Normally, I would probably ask the obvious question, how did it all start? But I will tweak it a little bit and I will ask, how is it possible that a guy... Young Patrick in high school, as I remember, yep. comes up with an idea for a company and starts the company in a very young age. Okay. Uh, most of the ideas comes with uh, from the need, let's say. So we had, uh, as a family, we had a need to earn some money at the beginning. But I was raised in, uh, in the environment when my parents always said that nothing is impossible. And there is no problems, there is only a, only a tasks, you know, to solve. So I was raised in that kind of atmosphere. So I knew it's going to be just a short of time that we're going to find some way to make some start some business and so on. And also my father and the grandfather, was uh, they were uh, entrepreneurs. So I was raised in this, this atmosphere that actually you're always in work, but you're never in work. So that's mm -hmm. like a work-life balance. So I was raised in that kind of atmosphere. So, um, so yeah, that the, the soil, the ground was good to start something, uh, something, uh, something new, something based on my idea. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, just repeat the question, por favor. That's the answer, I guess. <laughs> uh, so, but I'm, I'm interested in the process. Was there anything else you thought about or was it the dice right away no you're like i don't know 16 or 17 17 years old and you're like okay i'll start the company and was it like dice right away or was it like something i don't know like no no, no, no. more it's, serious stuff, i think as, as far as i know and i read a couple couple books about that and about the entrepreneurs it's it always looks like it's the first idea because it's, this is the this the idea mm -hmm. you know but it's never like that it's mm -hmm. always a process of trying in different things so it was the same, same here, but I was lucky enough to start with the hobby. So I was lucky enough to get into the hobby and then to figure it out how to do with it. So I tried different things. I dreamed about different things, mm -hmm. you know, as a kid to be a fireman like and a okay. policeman. So the same things. Okay. But when I saw my father working in his own company, then I realized that it's kind of a freedom to do whatever you like to do and to make your dreams come true. Mm -hmm. Okay. Was there any specific moment in time or like a event or, or something happened that actually sparked the idea for the dice? What, why dice? Like what's, what, what happened there? Yeah, then? yeah. It, it, like I mentioned, the hobbies so real playing games and board games, it was a hobby for some time. And um, I was happy and I was lucky enough to, to be a part of the group who were playing the, the role-playing games, like in old times, you know, um, in, uh, in the beginning, because in Poland that was a very beginning. Mm -hmm. just, Did it start uh, in the basement? Ex exact, exactly <laughs> in the basement. Exactly in the basement. It, it, it sounds like a cliche, but the, the basement was like basement, basement, like 100% okay. basement, like from the movies. Uh, and we had the, the group of, of friends who were playing the, the role-playing games. So that wasn't the first session I was playing and I was enjoying a game itself. But then I realized that something is missing there. So at first I tried with, uh, with the board and with some details around the board to make it look much better. Um, and then the game uh, itself, like a board, became very beautiful, designed and with all those details. And my best friend Bruno has this beautiful figures all around and the big, big, beautiful dragon with all those details. I saw his passion, how many time, how many hours, days uh, he spent to, to paint those figures. And I was like, man, first of all, I would like to have some of those. Mm -hmm. I did. Uh, second of all, I would like to have this kind of a passion, this kind of a hobby. 
And third of all, um, I would like to do something on my own, you know, because to mm-hmm. go to the store to get something which is there, it's not the thing I always dreamed of. I always wanted mm-hmm. to be like, I was, I was always envy about the, the artists, the painters, you know, because they were making things um, with their own hands, with their own imagination, mm-hmm. and they created something which then, for some of them, go to the market and people appreciate it mm-hmm. and uh, get those those things for themselves. Mm-hmm. Okay. Do you remember what did you play? Uh, that was a classic D&D. Oh, yeah. That was a classic D&D play. Yeah. Bruno was covered with the book and we have all those cards and, mm-hmm. and dice, of course. So after a couple sessions, I realized that everything is beautiful there. Everything is detailed. Everything mm-hmm. is so, uh, so, uh, so beautiful. And then I realized that something missing there, you know, those dice for a couple cents or, I don't know, one dollar mm-hmm. for a set, um, mostly from China back in the time, uh, they were in, they, they didn't fit there, mm-hmm. they, they, mm-hmm. they didn't fit there. So I decided to do something from the very scratch. Okay. Um, okay, so we have a situation where people play RPGs and they have all the fancy stuff and the and the miniatures and everything, but they don't have cool dice. Yep. So that's like one thing about the market at that time. But is there anything else that you could tell us about the... Because there's a lot of people watching us, hopefully. Uh, not from Poland, from, from the US and all around the world. So maybe you could... Tell us a little bit more about the background, how the Polish market, RPGs market or or gaming market looked like back then, because it's totally different than today. Yeah, yeah. 20 years ago, it was totally different. 20 something years ago, because that was a process. It wasn't like... Mm -hmm. So um, we had like in our city, which is like half a million people, a bit more. We had like two, maximum three stores, but Mm -hmm. very small. Um, uh, where you can buy those 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 things, but uh, that wasn't much. That wasn't a culture. That was a very niche thing to do. Mm-hmm. So um, I was very lucky to have friends who enjoyed that uh, that thing. Uh, so twenty years ago, also there was no e-commerce stuff, so you couldn't start mm-hmm. right away uh, with your ideas like you can right now. But um, what I realized after a couple months. Uh, that was um, the engraved dies, the, the dies with the with the design. That w- that was um, that was something new in a global scale because I started with the e-commerce uh, platform in Poland, very very small e-commerce platform, and this set uh, sold for ten times more than I expected. And then I realized, okay, something is going on mm-hmm. here, right? So if the people are able to to get dies for the same price as the miniatures and the figures. Mm-hmm. They can appreciate design the the design also in uh in this shape not only in a, in a figure so um then i realized that after this fir- first uh first auction that uh something is going on here no one else in, is in poland and then the market grows but we're going to talk about it later probably yes we will uh, <laughs> of course we will i have a whole list of questions and there is really a lot of them so <laughs> let's get let's get going with that. Yeah. Um, okay, so so there is the idea, and there is the market which barely exists. And did you do any research because before you like jumped into producing dyes and selling dyes, was there any research that you check? Okay, so there's that many companies, that many dyes produced every year, and so on and so on. Hell no. Okay. No, totally not. <laughs> I wasn't aware of nothing when it comes to the market. Uh, I was just dreaming to have the first set made on my own with my imagination. So I wasn't aware of any companies for the first, I don't know, year or something till we get to the to the fairs. So um, yeah, that was a uh, that was intuition, I will say, or uh, or a lot of luck and determination. Not the research, not the Excel file or the calculator. Mm-hmm. No, that wasn't a thing. That wasn't that. That kind of a startup. Mm-hmm. Okay. That would be impossible today, I guess. <laughs> Where there is internet and everyone knows everything. And it's basically... always impossible to start something with a passion, not with a calculator. But yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. All right. Uh, so 
you have the you have the idea and how do you actually start like what do you do first like you think okay i will do dice and uh-huh then i did them I mean, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it wasn't that easy i mean i was aware that we didn't have any machines mm -hmm. or prototyping or 3d printers no mm -hmm. no that was not at all century ago no one heard about the, the 3d printer and uh, i was also aware of my i know i mean I knew that I cannot 3D model it in a computer because that was a ni Windows 98, so there was no software for that yet. Mm -hmm. So the the easiest and the, the most difficult way to do it was to do it manually, you know. So mm -hmm. I just took uh, some um, some. So you did a model like uh, like kind of model of die. Um, I took the. I took the regular die, they mm -hmm. then they made a small, um, simple mold mm -hmm. out of that, and then to and then I used the material like a clay mm -hmm. to to engrave the the runes uh, manually. So okay, that was a very long process. I realized that the set is like okay, it's seven dies, right? But when you count all those walls and sides and the dies, oh, come on, it's what and eighty two or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when I started with D four, I was like, okay, after one day, it's okay, that's done. But then, then okay, the 10, the 12, <laughs> come on, when, 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 where does it end, right? Uh -huh. So it took uh, many days to mm -hmm. make the first set like that. Okay, okay. And, and what, what actually, what was the first one? Uh, I want, uh, the first, I wanted to have uh, the Elvish one, um, inspired by the, by the Lord of the Rings, but they, the runes were way too difficult to mm -hmm. make them like mm -hmm. this, like two, three millimeters. So we I started here. with them. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, but still, still complicated design. Yes. But with the totally different technology. So yes. the first one was the runic ones because the runes were like made with uh, straight lines mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and they were a bit more easy. Mm -hmm. Although the, I, I, um, I made some mistake with the D6, D6 so they weren't uh, D6 in a set at the very beginning. So, okay. Um, the first set in sale, sorry guys, I mean, yeah, that was like that. The, there was no uh, D6 in a set, but people didn't care. They just okay. they were just amazed with, uh, with the design. I'm wondering if there is anyone who has those first Q Workshop sets out there. So uh, let us know if you have them because that would be really special. Uh, and... Uh, and rare, I guess. Like uh, probably there. Are I would like to have them definitely. There are, you don't. Yeah. You I, don't have them. Anymore. I would like. No, no, I don't have them. They, they were, they, they went for the market. Okay. They go for the market. But. Okay. All right. Uh, okay. So, what was the biggest challenge you have to you had to face at that point at the like the very beginning of making dice. I, in Poland, because that's also important, I guess, in this. When we are talking about the first weeks or months, or even a couple of years, mm -hmm. definitely, I wouldn't even call it a challenge. You mm -hmm. know, that was like an adrenaline shot every time when something <laughs> came up, you know. So when we realized with my dad that we need more than three sets, <laughs> <laughs> then we were like, okay, what to do now? And then we didn't consider it as a, as a, as a, as a problem to... To solve that was just another task. So mm -hmm. um, that was a dream. I mean, making a dream come true. So there was no obstacles there, mm -hmm. and that was a very pleasant and beautiful moment. Mm -hmm. Okay, but I'll 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 go deeper. Okay, try, <laughs> Here, try again. Yeah. <laughs> I'll try again. Was it was it uh, like? When you think of, when you're thinking about it now, was it more challenge? Like, like you said, it, it wasn't a challenge, but was it harder from the creative side of the business or from the production side, for example? Uh -huh. Like, was it what was what was harder and and to 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 come up with because you started from from nothing? So, uh, from the creative point, wasn't that difficult because from the very beginning, the the group of the uh, the society around the games is mm -hmm. very, you know, um, creative. So I was just asking people what they would like to have, and people came up with the idea uh, with small, you know, quick emails what they would like to have. So we were cooperating with uh, with the fans and with the, with the players from the very beginning. From the technological point of view, 
the biggest shot was the first wholesale uh, order from mm -hmm. the from the American distributor, but that was a couple of years later. That was a pff, that was a huge challenge. That mm -hmm. was a huge challenge. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, do you remember how many s different designs or sets did we release during the first year? Oh, uh, I think five to eight, okay. something like that. That was a very small offer with. Uh, with maybe two or three colors, so mm -hmm. very, yeah. So where did you, where did you get your like inspirations from? Like what what because you said okay, so there was movies and then there was the Elvish one, and what else? Like what's what's come on, man? Those arts and books, okay, everything and mm -hmm. the, the whole idea about the, the role playing market. It's it's packed with artists it's packed mm -hmm. with uh, with inspirations with uh, with beautiful books so that was super easy to do mm -hmm. to get inspired from the market so that wasn't like a typical industry to work in that was something super excited to get inspired from the market mm -hmm. i have to ask about one thing uh, because there, sometimes there is uh, questions when we talk, I talk to, to you guys uh, during conventions, etc. Uh, there is always a question of the forest dice set. Uh -huh. mm, where did that idea come from and was it really hard to do? Because it looks like a lot of work, basically. It's, it's so increased and like uh, complicated design. And so do you remember which one... In order, was it like the first, the second one, one the third of the first, one? one, one of, of the, the first. first, actually, yeah, but only the six this time. <laughs> oh, okay, so there was yeah, the, only there the six. There the was beginning. no set, but there was an idea for for the for the leaves and for something closer to the nature, and uh, we wanted to have something hand painted. Mm -hmm. So because most of the dyes, still even now, some of them they are hand painted. So. Um, we wanted to have something three color, so the, the base color, the the black, for example, or brown, and then the green leaves. And I remember they sold out on the fair, first fair, yeah. when the people saw them uh, in the real life, they were like, okay, give me more. And we were painting them during the convention under the table, <laughs> so the people <laughs> came up and we were like... Yeah, and we took the emails from them when they sold out, people gave us a card, written, handwritten cards, to send an email with uh, so they can order it online or through the oh, okay. through the internet. So yeah, that was a that was a huge hit because they were very unusual. That's mm -hmm. how we called yeah. our dice for many years. Yeah. Unusual dice. All right, awesome. Um, okay, but I guess you didn't do it all by yourself. So is there anyone who particularly helped you in the first? phase of creating Q Workshop as a company uh, because of course every company is people so is there any people without whom there wouldn't be Q Workshop at all? Definitely. Uh, the whole family and a lot of friends helped and participated in mm -hmm. it. Uh, I think they saw me struggling for 18 hours a day doing different <laughs> things and I was come on let me help you with this one. Oh yeah let me help you with this one. Uh -huh. Uh, I was. I remember I was traveling in the bus one time, and my friend saw me. He was driving in a different bus or a car, and I had this huge prototype that was like before dice itself. But uh, I was engraving the the tower for the for the game. It took like oh my god, three or four weeks, mm -hmm. stone after stone, you know. And um, he saw me like, come on, Patrick, you, you cannot like get rest in the bus at least for five minutes or something. I was like, no, no, come on, I need to do it. Like, <laughs> I have an order for that and <laughs> people asking for three. So, uh, so they saw me like very determined, mm -hmm. determined, 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 mm -hmm. determined. Thank you. Uh, and uh, uh, they decided to help me and I invited them to do different things. Like uh, one of the best friends uh, created our online shop. Someone helped me to make the pictures, although the first pictures, I don't know if you are, you know that, guys, but that was a time when there was no order. The, 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 the cameras were so expensive. Like, uh -huh. It was like two months income. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So uh, the, the scanner for the papers, for, for the documents mm -hmm. from the corporation I was working in uh, for the weekend. So I was scanning the dice itself 
there was no picture. They, they were scanned through the scanner mm -hmm. for the documents. Mm -hmm. And then I cut it in paint, <laughs> like the graphic program, you know. All right. So um, there was a lot of ideas, a lot of people involved in it. Some of them are still in the team. Some of them went in a different different path. Mm -hmm. But definitely parents, my sister, some of the best friends were involved in the process. They, that wasn't like a full-time job, mm -hmm. but they were helping uh, with all those things that they were good mm -hmm. in. They were good in, mm -hmm. yeah. So what, what was your role in the beginning? What did you do? Like uh, everything or everything you specialized in some... Oh. Everything and nothing, yeah. From okay. the very small <laughs> things to the, to, the, to the planning. But... Um, I think that my role is to push the idea mm -hmm. because if you earn like 200 euro monthly mm -hmm. for the business, mm -hmm. you need to push it yeah. for yeah. many months. So I was, I was a believer for a long time. That mm -hmm. was my main role, I think. Okay. So you're the creative uh, elements in the company. And, that, uh, that's the and most pleasant part. Okay. That would All right. All right. Okay. Uh, we, we talked a lot We've been talking for a while <laughs> about the very beginnings of the company, but it's been 20 years. So it's been the process of actually getting from there to the place we are uh, now. Is there anything or maybe one or maybe more points in time which you can say that were somehow a breakthrough? A breakthrough, yeah, mm -hmm. uh, or a milestone for the company that you could name, name it and say, okay, this helped us to go further because... Yeah, definitely. Um, mm, so the, the real breakthrough was to start to travel and to start to, and start to meet with, uh, with the gamers, you know, personally, to see their reaction on affairs mm -hmm. and to see how they, how they enjoy the design, which is better, which is not, mm -hmm. to, to talk with them about new ideas and so on. So after two years, I guess we were we had the time and energy and uh, and balls to do it, mm -hmm. uh, and we started with uh, with the fairs in, in Germany. So that was a huge breakthrough for us because we realized that people really enjoy that. It's not like okay, I'm gonna buy this one, this one. No, they were amazed about the product itself. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, you said about uh, the fairs in Germany, I guess it was Spiel in, in Essen. Uh, how do you remember it, the first one? Like what, besides the, the thing you said about like, uh, that people reacted yeah. enthusiastically on our uh, dice, uh, what was the impression it did on you? Uh, I was super impressed about the size of the market, mm -hmm. about the size of the industry. Um, and how many people can enjoy and spend the time that way, you know? That mm -hmm. was the beginning of maybe not the internet itself, but also online gaming and, and those things. And I remember the huge basket, like from the, from the um, grocery stores, mm -hmm. people were, that was the story I was uh, passing uh, to, to friends in, in Poland that we came from the place where people were, like you know, driving with the uh, with the market basket filled with games mm -hmm. that that surprised me mm -hmm. a lot because comparing to, to the Polish market that was ten times more and oh. yeah that was that was something okay was it the same when we uh, first went to the U.S. Uh, U.S. is always twice bigger <laughs> when it comes to everything. So <laughs> okay. Right away when we get up from the plane, it was like, come on, it's even bigger. Uh -huh. So yeah, everything was bigger, were, even more. Were people surprised somehow or were there any other reaction when they heard that we are from Poland? Yeah, for, for them, the, the product itself, um, we uh, looked like, Kind of exotic. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, come on, where? Okay, Poland. Oh yeah, okay. The, the tanks from the from the Russians and stuff. Okay. And uh, yeah, they were they were surprised that we decided to travel that far to show the products. But as we as we know, after one or two years, we were just simply the first to to show the, that kind of a product. So mm -hmm. it was worth it to travel anywhere to show those uh, beautiful dice to the people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Was it the only way to reach new customers by, back then? Uh, like going to Spiel or like how did you how did you reach to so many people? Because like growing means 
enlarging the, the, the group of people that are our customers? How did you reach them back then? Uh, Fares wasn't uh, the main um, road, I mean, the, the main way to, to gain new customers. That was, uh, that was the best way to get the feedback. Mm -hmm. But to grow the business, the internet helps a lot back in the time. So 2004, 2006, uh, online shop, the eBay auctions and, mm -hmm. and all those platforms helps us a lot. And um, that was the quickest way to get mm -hmm. the customers. Okay. Okay. Mm. A rather general question. Is there anything that you didn't know back then in the beginning and you know it now uh, that would help you to grow faster or do something better? Uh, is there anything you could name? Yeah. Um, hmm. Good question. It's a good question. <laughs> Probably everything. <laughs> Probably everything. That will be lovely to know what we know right now about the market, about the customers, about the designs, and also um, the license and so on, and to travel back in the time. But I wouldn't do it, you know. Mm -hmm. That was so fresh, so beautifully naive to, to do all those things for so, the first time. So you you wouldn't change anything? Uh I'm not saying it was the whole process was perfect, mm -hmm. but uh, I wouldn't change much for sure. Okay, all right. Uh, is there any specific memory or event or thing that happens that you remember and you could name it that is your favorite memory from the history of Q Workshop? Is there anything that comes to your mind at first? Uh, from for my, many reasons, it doesn't like it, it's your uh, answer. From my perspective, not from the company perspective, although it was it's the same uh, at some point because people are are the company. Um, I remember one fairs mm -hmm. in Vienna, in Vienna, mm -hmm. in in Austria. Uh, we get the invitation for uh, from the from the organizer of the from, from of the fairs, and he said we got. There's small uh, fairs in, in Vienna, and would you like to participate? That was one of the first fairs, so we couldn't say no. We mm -hmm. were like uh, checking the market. And um, I remember how crazy what, what that was, how determined stupid <laughs> we were to travel mm -hmm. from Saturday morning mm -hmm. to get there Saturday at night <laughs> to set up <laughs> you had a very similar stories right now. Right? Yeah, I guess. To set up the the, the stand from six o'clock to eight o'clock, mm -hmm. to stand there whole night and uh, whole day to 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 get along with the with the people and with the customers, and then from probably from because of the money reason and we wanted to get back to our girlfriends and friends, we decided to travel back. That was uh, that was. Um, Exciting nightmare, let's say. I remember, <laughs> I remember traveling with a car packed with dice, and um, I remember I was I was almost falling asleep. You know, my friend was sleeping next to me, and um, I remember two Polish buses traveling through the mountain. I remember the Polish plates, and trust me, if they weren't there, I I would just lost the roads. They mm -hmm. were like two big, beautiful. I imagine like that, like those two white angels helping us mm -hmm. to travel back home. So I wouldn't, that was one of the things I would change. Probably we'll sleep in a car on some small motel, you know, <laughs> but to work three days in a row without sleeping, that wasn't the best thing to do okay. uh, at the beginning. So that, that's the most um, exhausting and exciting memory from those times when I was in, uh, in, mm -hmm. in, in, mm -hmm. in charge of, doing things in the first line mm -hmm. of okay. the business. Okay. Is there, so, okay, so maybe it didn't sound like that, but that was the favorite memory. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, uh, <laughs> scary and, and exciting at the same time. There is a lot of them. There's, there's a lot of beautiful memories. Most of them are connected with the things they were uh, uh, done for the first time, mm -hmm. you know, so the fairs, hiring people, making dice for, uh, in, uh, for the distributor 
and um, new designs, new licenses, all those things were exciting, but not that dangerous as a traveling through the night. <laughs> okay. All right, but uh, I I was leading to another question. What because if that was like one of the favorite uh, memories or most exciting memories. Was there anything that you would like to forget about? <laughs> Any flops or anything that you did really badly and you you can share? Yeah, yeah, yeah. let me think about that. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, I remember one of the um, orders from, um, from Canada. So um, we packed the dice... That was uh, that was one of the stores in Canada, mm -hmm. and um, we packed the package. We signed uh, the address, and we just sent it. And uh, the customer said after one week or two that there was no dice, right? After another week, they came back to Poland, ripped off all the packages, were like destroyed, you know, like something was pff, like an animal get to the package. <laughs> and then I saw those stamps from Colombia. <laughs> and then I realized that we forgot to, to sign the, the Canada. So that, that, that went to the Colum Colombia in Canada. Mm -hmm. It's a state, right? Mm -hmm. And instead of Canada, it went to Colombia. And they thought <laughs> we, were trying, we were trying to smuggle the drugs or something <laughs> like that. And that was one of the you know, funny mistakes from the from the selling point of view. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but I wouldn't change that. <laughs> I got <laughs> super excited to see that ripped off package and to, to think what happened actually. Yeah. yeah. All right. <laughs> I didn't know that story. Uh, <laughs> all right. So if, if we think about like the whole scope of Q Workshop being a company, Polish company, in uh, on the worldwide market because we've been selling dice uh, right from the almost right from the beginning to uh, outside of Poland. Um, is there anything that you experienced or encountered uh, any problems or uh, difficulties that happened only because our market was what it was in the beginning and we were from Poland and uh, and uh, so how do you how do you see that connection with like uh, being Polish company 20 years ago or 20 or 18 or 15 uh, outside of Poland which was different I guess uh, that weren't uh, that difficult because since 2004 we are a part of the European Union so that was the first year yeah, that was first year, and um, we were able from the very start. Of course, there was a lot of papers, a lot of you know, document documentation around the product and stuff. But from the very beginning, we were lucky enough to send the dice wherever we wanted and whatever people wanted. For example, the battleships in uh, in, uh, in in the sea. I mm -hmm. remember those orders also. So. I realized that the gamers are also there. So just <laughs> name, everywhere. Everywhere. Name the country, like Japan, New Zealand, Canada, Alaska, mm -hmm. whatever, Colombia. No, that was a mistake. Uh, but whatever we wanted, we were able to send that. And not and I'm not saying that we will stop the business if we were in the part of the European mm -hmm. Union, but it was much easier. Although people were super surprised every time when they saw us around I mean um beyond in uh beyond the Europe mm -hmm. uh, what was the what was the feeling when you saw that okay today we are shipping the our dice to Japan and then to like I don't know China and and, and Argentina and well, how did that dreams came true remember I said about the artist who painted the painting uh -huh. and he's able to sell it from time to time I was feeling like this painter and my father also uh, I know that um, that we sell that the arts everywhere we want that and like more than once in a month or once more than one in a lifetime sometimes when it comes to the painters so that was super exciting we were very proud that the people appreciate design and idea for the product so every time new country new address new customer that was super exciting to do and mm -hmm. we, were, we were filled with the proud for sure mm -hmm. all right when you 
if you already started the <laughs> the uh, topic of being proud, I have a question on my list about mm. about that as well. Okay. Uh, if you if you'll think about the whole period and the the Kyork shop as a company, what what is the thing that you're the most proud of looking back into the past? Is uh, there any one thing that you could name or it has to be more? Uh, a sparkle in an eye, everyone who were involved in this process, you know, that I saw that and um, how determined everyone were in their period of time or till now, uh, to participate and make this dream come true, you know, I'm proud of this particular thing, which is a spark in an eye who some, of someone who believed that he, it can work, you know, and I saw that immediately when someone were traveling for the first time to the fairs with us, he realized that, come on, this is so awesome mm -hmm. to create things that people appreciate. So I'm really proud of everyone who get uh, involved in this process to make it like it is right now after 20 years. I'm super proud of that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, I, I'm always interested also because we talked a lot about the, the process and, and, and how it all happened that we are where we are today. But I'm also interested for you as a person, as a founder of the company, uh, if we can still stay in the past for a little bit uh, for a short while <laughs> is there is there a particular because we talked about we talked about um, fairs and and online stores and everything but is there a particular particular point in time where where when you thought okay this will be a serious business and uh, uh, and and my uh, and business for years to come mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Like to get to go to the market, the strategy to go to the market uh, um, in United States what was another breakthrough, because uh, this is one of the most important market for us. And the first hit for us uh, was the first order from the from the distributor. Mm -hmm. And um, I really I remember the mail from Alliance. They they wanted so many dyes that we couldn't make for, I don't know, five years mm -hmm. in this technology. So I thought, okay, that might be a problem if I wasn't going to respond to this email for five years. <laughs> <laughs> it's time to figure out something. <clears throat> uh, let's, let's get creative, right? So I remember we, we sit with, with my father. He's a very creative and determined guy. Um, and we wanted to make it happen in months, not in years. And eventually we did. But we need to come up with totally different approach when it comes to the technology and to stay with uh, good details and, and, and beautiful design. So this year, because it took like eight, ten months to make it happen, then to pack and to send it. That was a uh, 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 very difficult times, mm -hmm. but I was sure that we we're going to find a way. So to work with different technology, to, to push our ideas and to to make them happen was a, was a huge breakthrough and since then that became a, a serious business because we were able to to you know uh to make it happen mm -hmm. okay all right um we talked a lot about the past but q workshop is not only about the past it's also about the present and about the future so my second my not second but next question is What's your position in the company now? And if you're satisfied with it or not? I'm just giving the interviews every 10, every 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> see, you in 10, okay. see you next time. And how do, <laughs> in 10 years. And how, how do you like it? Uh, it's amazing. <laughs> Finally, I can, I can travel uh, for the vacation, not only for fairs, because first mm -hmm. 10, 15 years was like everything was connected with the business. So mm -hmm. I can rest a bit mm -hmm. and I like it. And some, someone much more, com someone much better in the many ways is leading the business. So uh, I'm just giving the interviews. Okay. Yeah. So, so was it like back then 
you saw dice everywhere and you went to sleep and you saw die, you wake, you woke up and you saw like a big die in front of you and dice everywhere and everything. And now you don't have to think about them all the time. What is it like that? Not that much, <laughs> but yeah, everything was and still is about the dice. Like I'm in a, in a phone book of people and their cell phones as Patrick the die. So <laughs> everyone thought that it's going to be me forever. And actually it is. So I'm, 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 I'm really proud of that. All right. Do you still play? Uh, not that often. And actually I played the most before... I started the business because it w it was a hobby. <laughs> now it, then it became a business, but the business became a hobby. So mm -hmm. pff, it's like do, do you have a lot of dice at home, or you just like leave them at, I, <laughs> behind the wall? <laughs> I got the door. I got one set with me. It's a uh, it's, uh, it's a metal one, and the rest of it is in a manufacturing place. Okay. that's uh, uh, plant. That's the best place, and all around the world. So mm -hmm. I don't don't need no much. Let, let them go to the world. All right, all right, understandable. Um, do you have a favorite dice set? Was it the first one or like other one? Um, I, really enjoy, I really enjoy the, the Elvish one till very now. It was one of the first and it's, it's super popular right now. So I really enjoy them till now. But another breakthrough was the metal ones and mm -hmm. the Pathfinder on the Kickstarter. That was a huge kick for us. And the um, level of the determination to make it like that, uh, it was very huge. So uh, the Pathfinder is an Elvish one for sure. Mm -hmm. All right. Is there any set or design that you dream of that we would that you would like us to do? The list is very short. Uh -huh. Or maybe there's nothing there because uh, when the company is, it's is all growing... Here. It's here. <laughs> when the company is growing and it's healthy enough to make those uh, those dreams come true, you don't you shouldn't wait. You know, mm -hmm. so they are all, all right. there already. And okay, I'm waiting for more from you guys from from the team because you know you know better. Right. All now. right, we'll we'll do our best. Okay, we are uh, we'll be uh, wrapping it up uh, shortly. So I have few last questions uh, to you, and my first one is. Is there anything you would like to, or a different way, if you were to describe Q Workshop in three words, what oh. words would that be? Okay, nice. Um, being creative, for sure. That's four. Uh, what? <laughs> That's four words. Being right? creative, for sure? <laughs> Even five. Okay. No, no, no. Okay, so that is the first one. Yeah, uh, that's uh, yeah. So creative uh, as uh, as a company, dice for sure because it's always gonna be there. I mean, no matter which industry direction we're gonna go, I feel that we're gonna stay around the dice dice for sure, and uh, and hobby. All right. Because that's what we are doing for it's it's business of course, but if not the gamers, if not the hobby. Uh, and the passion around that, that, that it wouldn't be us. Okay. So is there anything you would like to tell our fans uh, right here in this occasion that we have? Is there anything you would like to tell them, to people that supported us for years? For sure. Uh, please stay tuned when it comes to new ideas from the team because it's like a lot of people working around that. And I know some plans about the license and also plans about the design and also plans about the technology. So uh, please stay tuned when it comes to new ideas of Q-Workshop, that's for sure. But personally, I would like to wish you um, to have a time, to have an energy, to have a peace of mind and uh, a lot of opportunities and friends around to stay um, focused on your hobby and to stay uh, and to have a time to play that's that's the most important thing right you don't need those things on your shelves you would like to use them and to spend beautiful time with your friends around so that's what i wishing you from the bottom of my heart to have a time to play and to enjoy and spend the time in a way like you used to like i did in the high school so that's our time machine right to spend the time in a beautiful way all right and the last one is there anything you would like to wish us, Q Workshop, for the uh, 20th anniversary? 
Yeah. Uh, yeah. Another 120, although I will be able to, to, <laughs> to, to see participate that. <laughs> in, the, in the party like we did uh, a couple of days ago. But I would like to last as long as possible because the idea is very honest and idea is very, uh, very creative. And then I would like to company and I wish the company to exist as long as possible till the, the very last day of the of the industry, which I hope never ends. All right. How did you like the party? Uh, I was, it doesn't happen much, but I felt a bit overwhelmed. Uh -huh. Everything was prepared perfectly. People were enjoying the time and a lot of memories and a lot of pictures, which I didn't see never I mean before. I was on those pictures of sometimes, but <laughs> I haven't seen those pictures before. And thank you everyone. For the for the beautiful party, probably we're gonna release some pictures and from some videos, but it was it was perfect and, and beautiful. All right, awesome. And if you want to celebrate with us and so use our online store and you know we are all there on social medias, so follow us. We'll be releasing a lot of dice sets, a lot of materials, YouTube movies and, and everything. So there's a lot going on in the future for Q Workshop in the nearest future. Um, thank you so much for uh, talking uh, okay. to me and to you guys. Patrick, it was a great pleasure. Hopefully you learned something about the beginnings and about everything what brought us where we are today. And uh, so see you next time. See you on our YouTube channel. Uh, subscribe to our channel and I will see you next time in the next uh, interview. And have a great, great day. And um, yeah, thank you so much, guys. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Patrick. Bye-bye.